everyone, this is Ross, and um, in today's video, I'm going to be answering a very common question that I get. It's so common that I figured I'd just do a video answering the question. Um, it's also a very complex answer, and usually when people ask this question, I have to ask them a question in return to even get to the answer. Um, the question is, I planted a fig tree, and this is Karen Jensen who asked me this. I planted a fig tree three years ago, and I still do not have figs. What could be wrong? So the question I have to ask you to get to the bottom of this is, did your tree ever form figs? Two, did your tree form figs? They were on the branches, but maybe they dropped. Three. Did your tree form figs, but they never turned ripe? And by the end of your season, when the frost came, the figs were still hard and green and not edible. So depending on which of those three answers you give me, I'm going to give you a different set of reasons why that could be. Okay? So that's, that's how complex this is. So the first one is um, your fig tree never formed fruits. And if, you're, if your tree never formed fruits, I think the most obvious question is, and it can be applied to, uh, to, to everything I'm about to say in this video, is your tree healthy? I mean, that's the first thing you should be looking at. Is your tree healthy? Is it getting enough sunlight? Is it getting enough heat? Do you have a long enough season? You know, are you feeding your tree? Um, you know, there's so many different variables there. I think most of you guys have some sense of growing that you know if your tree's healthy or not, okay? So that's the first question. Is your tree healthy? The second question is, are you, are you doing something called pinching? Do you, do you know what pinching is? Um, I've done many videos, and you can go to my YouTube channel search for pinching and I have about four to five six videos or so on on this topic this technique that I use being in a short season climate I force my trees into fruiting because um, figs take a long time to to, uh, to fruit they're they're a long season crop they're a fall crop right and for me growing a fall crop, um, it takes a lot of time. I only have 150 days in my season. So what I do is I force them to fruit by pinching them. And this is one way you can get them to form, okay? So no matter where you live, you can do this. And essentially, if you watch these videos, it'll tell you a couple simple things. One, you take off the apical bud. We literally just take our fingers, pinch it, and just break it off. And you can see it in this thumbnail here. I'm breaking it off. You can see the sap flow there that's white. That's what happens when you break off the tip. It starts bleeding sap. Now, what else happens when you break off the tip is it changes the hormones in the plant, in the tree. Um, it allows the tree to, to kind of get a break on growing. And instead, it, it kind of, something clicks in the tree's mind or, or hormones and the tree starts uh, it's given the opportunity to fruit kind of frees up kind of changes the you know you know um, instead of you know if you're driving a car and it's like you're hitting the gas go 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 that's kind of what the tree is doing and then instead we, we took off the tip, we hit the brake, and now things are saying stop, 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 stop. You know what I mean? So it kind of changed things in the plant, the hormones of the tree, and now fruit can occur. Now if you want to learn the finer details of pinching, there's a few more finer details that you should certainly pay attention to. Please watch these videos. Uh, I, do video, I do videos on this topic for a million and one reasons. I would not be able to fruit a lot of my figs here in Pennsylvania without this technique. 
it's extremely important. Okay, so that's one reason why, it's two reasons why so far your figs have not formed, okay? Now, another reason, and this is a pretty common reason as well, maybe you live in California, you have a long enough season, right? Pinching doesn't necessarily solve the equation for you. Well, in that scenario, a lot of trees, I would say about 30% of varieties, maybe more, maybe 30 to 40% of varieties, maybe even 50%, they're a little bit more stubborn. Now, I've done videos on getting my fruit trees. I've showed you guys plenty of, plenty of fig varieties that have fruited in their first year. I've even grafted many varieties that I've gotten them to fruit in their first month or two of the graft's life. So, so fig trees can certainly fruit at a young age. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they can't. But there is about 30 to 40 percent varieties that I've come come across. You know, growing many varieties, you get to experience each little nuance of them. You know, they all have different genetics. And like I said, about 30% of them just are a bit more stubborn. They're not as precocious, right? They don't fruit at a young age. Some of them take about two to three, mostly three to five years, some of them to fruit of that 30%. Um, there's another reason why your tree may be a bit more stubborn. Um, some trees that either come from seedlings so maybe i was out in the wild in california and i came across this wild fig tree that was planted from, from seed this happens a lot in california it doesn't happen where i live it doesn't exist but in california i can walk around and see fig trees growing in the cracks of the street and you know these fig trees guys if they're wild and I, I've eaten the fruit off of them, they're tasty, they're really good, I could take cuttings from that fig tree and I could spread them, spread them around the, the country. There's many varieties like that. Raspberry latte is one that comes to mind. Well, most seedlings that I've come across that are wild, they're kind of in an immaturity stage. They take a bit of time to adapt to become precocious may take years. So, not that your tree is going to take years once you've propagated that from cutting, but in my mind, a lot of them are in a state of immaturity and they take a bit of time to mature. Another example of a fig that may be in a state of immaturity are figs that you get from tissue culture. And tissue culture is a very common process that a lot of plant breeders use, um, I'm sorry, plant growers use, a lot of nurseries now are doing this with their fig trees. Um, they basically take the DNA of the plant and grow it and clone it. It's, I don't know, I don't know much more than that. You know, they clone the plant through using their DNA, kind of like stem cells, I guess. So by doing this though, you remove all the diseases which is great, and it's a common thing, and I, overall it's pretty beneficial, but most of those fig trees develop weird things about them, and a lot of them, in my mind, revert back to a state of immaturity. You know, a common one that you would find is Violette de Bordeaux, a French fig, a very old French fig, and that will fruit for you in its first year. But if you tissue culture that plant, a lot of times it will not fruit for you in its first year and it may take a couple of years. So depending on the nursery you got it from, it could be a very common, it's a very common practice. How do you know if it's tissue cultured? Well, when you got the plant, it was one very inexpensive, like we're talking five bucks, six bucks, seven dollars or less. And it was a very small plant. It came in a, like a, a two inch, three inch size pot. The tree was maybe six to six to nine inches tall, and that was it. Most of those trees are tissue culture. Okay, so that answers all of the common reasons of why your fig tree has not formed fruits. Okay. 
The next common thing here is my fig tree has formed fruits, but the fruits are dropping off of the tree before they're ready, before they're edible. And in this scenario, the most common reason, of course, is nutrition. Is your plant healthy? Um, another reason for this, and the next most common reason, and it's likely if you got your tree planted from a seed, you didn't grow this from cutting. Like a lot of people unknowingly plant a lot of fruit trees from seeds. They'll take a fruit from the store, cut it open, take the seeds out, plant it. That's really not a good idea in a lot of fruits, unless they're, of course, tropical. Especially in figs, is this a horrible idea? Uh, it's an unbelievably low chance that you will get a fig that doesn't need pollination. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I go to this next this next website here, there's four types of figs within Ficus carica. Ficus carica is the species of the fig tree. That's what we're talking about. Fig, Ficus carica, they're the same thing. Okay. Now, there's four types, like I said. Here they are. Smyrna, San Pedro, Common, and Capra fig. Now, each, all four of these means a different thing. A Capra fig is a male. Okay, this one will never be edible. It's not an edible fig. This fig, with the help of the fig wasp, helps pollinate the female figs, which are the Smyrna types, the San Pedro types, and the common types. These three are female and edible. Now, you will see Capra figs growing all throughout California. You'll also see in California, you won't you won't see it, but there is a fig wasp that's present there. In most parts of California, even in Northern California, parts of Northern California, it was imported, the climate suits the fig wasp, and it is naturalized there. It is not naturalized anywhere else in the United States. So, this creates a problem because if you don't have a common fig, a common female, the other two require pollination. And this whole time your fig tree is fruiting and actually, you know, putting out these figs and you're like, oh my God, I'm so happy. They're, they're there. They're present finally. And then the end of the season comes and they just fall off. And you're just like, what the heck, right? Well, that's because they need pollination from the fig wasp, and they're likely San Pedro types or Smyrna types. Now, the common fig, that's what I grow. I only grow common figs. I, through research and knowing if they fruited for people outside of California, you can determine that they're likely to be common. So, these don't require any pollination, like I said, of the first crop or the second crop. The first crop is called the Brava. That forms on last year's wood. The second crop is called the main crop. That forms on new year's growth or new year's wood. Neither of those two crops require the fig wasp if it's common. And they should not drop. Now, if they do drop, if you have a common fig and they did drop, you know it's common for sure, 100%, and they still dropped, here's the reasons why. Too much water or not enough water or not enough nutrients. Those are the three biggest reasons. Um, fig trees are very drought tolerant. But they're figs, to hold the figs on the tree, you still have to water the tree. They will fall off if the plant is stressed too much. Um, 
again, not enough nutrients, they will fall off, they will abort, there's not enough energy that can be put into that fruit. Too much water, if there's root rot, because you keep watering your, your tree too much, fig trees have very thin fibrous roots that if you water it too much, the roots will rot. If the roots start dying, the top of the tree starts dying. And the first thing to go is the fruits. So very important to know the differences between a Smyrna, a San Pedro, and a common type female, and a male type capper fig. Now, the way you can tell if it's common versus San Pedro or Smyrna is that the Smyrna type needs the wasp to rep to ripen the second crop, and the San Pedro types will ripen the first crop without pollination, but will require this, uh, the fig wasp for the second crop. So that's that's really it. Um, a lot of people grow San Pedros in the Pacific Northwest because they mainly concentrate on bravas, although they certainly should not be anymore because there's a lot of common figs that will ripen a main crop, a second crop, early enough for them to ripen in their season. But a very common San Pedro that you can get from a lot of online nurseries or even a lot of nurseries probably where you live is called Desert King. And like I said, Desert King only forms, it's a San Pedro type, it only forms fruit without pollination on last year's wood. So if you're cutting the wood back or it's dying because it's too cold where you live, you're not going to get fruit off of San Pedro. It's just not going to happen. All right, so there's, those are the four types. Those are the reasons why the fruit could be dropping off of the tree prematurely. Now, the third question is your fruits have formed, but you got to the end of the season and the fig tree has not ripened the fig. They're still hard. They're still green. They're not edible. What gives? Well, it's very likely that you as a grower messed up and you just have a lot of learning to do and lessons that can be learned to kind of improve your skills with these fig trees. Now, a fig tree is a very long season crop, right? You know, I have 150 days here of growing season and if I don't pinch, I'm not going to get the fruits to form early enough for them to ripen in time. I also have to be very careful about the genetics that I choose, the varieties that I choose that have the right genetics to fruit earlier in the season. It's the same thing with, with any other fruit out there or any other vegetable. There's early season crops, there's mid season crops, and there's late season crops. And depending on the variety, it'll be early, mid, or late. So that's what I'm getting at here. You need to know the variety that you're growing and what season it ripens its crop. You also need to give it the right amount of sunlight, the right amount of heat, the right, a lot of, right amount of nutrients. All three of those will create a healthy, thriving fig tree that will give it enough opportunity to fruit for you in the length of your season. Now, how do I know if I have a variety that is early enough to fruit in my climate? As an example, Karen Jensen, she commented on a different comment much earlier. This is two weeks ago. Just the, just the other day ago, she told me that she lives in North Carolina in the mountains. Now, I know because of where I live, if she lives in North Carolina in the mountains, it's a very cold place. She probably has a very short growing season. And she needs to have, especially if her tree's in the ground, because if they're in containers, they have access to more heat. They're going to ripen earlier for you. But if it's in the ground, there's not enough heat. The tree wakes up later. You can move a pot, a container. You can move them outside, give them an earlier start. So not only does she have it in the ground, but she may also have a variety that just isn't early enough for her climate. 
Well, you can go to my spreadsheet, and this is the spreadsheet I have linked in the comments, the description, I'm sorry, of every single video I've ever put out. We talk about the flavors of figs, synonyms of certain varieties, the varieties that I grow, and there's a, there's a sheet here that mentions every single variety I recommend for a shorter season climate, like Karen's and mine. So this is exactly how you're going to know. You can also go back to other other videos that I've done. I talk a lot about what will fruit for you early. You know, I've done separate videos exactly on this topic. So, you know, I'm giving you guys all the answers here. I hope I gave you guys a lot of information. That's really it. I mean, those are it's every single reason it could be. And the answer is not as simple, obviously, as you guys saw as you would think. Now, um, I, you know, that concludes this video, but I want to mention that I recently started a Patreon page, and I think it kind of makes sense to mention it more in this video than any other video, because if, if I'm saving a lot of your time, right, you spent three years, like Karen did, growing a fig for nothing, to have it not fruit at all, perhaps it needs pollination, right? You know, that's really disappointing. And that's a lot of money and time wasted. And, you know, you could be supporting people like me to get this information out to people to then know and save them all this time and money. And I feel like, you know, if you guys are watching my videos religiously and at this point of the video, this is a long video, you know, if you got to this point, you're probably someone that really enjoys my videos. Um, and you're probably someone who watches a lot of my videos. And you're definitely somebody who got a lot of value out of this video. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'd rather have you guys, um, with the help of this video, instead of spending money, 20 to $30 on a fig tree that's never going to fruit for you, you guys could support me and my videos by becoming a Patreon and signing up on this website for only five bucks so you know I don't like to plug this kind of thing and it, it just started this is the really the first first time I've created it and even talked about it in any sort of video but just throwing it out there obviously you guys don't have to do this but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys learned something and uh, I'll talk to y'all later all right see you for the next one